Leap frog is just like a frog. It, it leaped literally years and decades. So if I know that I can speak for myself, I see a lot of uh, people younger than me here, but we all remember in the West, in the US, uh, the telephone line, my bell, uh, and then waiting in the sleep for the cable back. Well, age of mobile technology. So they leapfrogged a century. Instead of 20th century technology, China immediately, you know, is into 21st century technology. The world's first cashless society. My last, I'm going to Beijing Thursday on business. I was just there a uh, couple months ago. And I never stopped at ATM. I used my uh, DD Ride app, which you might know DD is similar to Uber. They actually bought Uber China, so it's the same thing. You don't need cash for that. Uh, restaurants, you don't need cash. So China, literally, that's another part of the leapfrog. Uh, it, so if you, the notion of uh, sharing data, and, and if you want to buy anything, to experience anything, you do it this way, you're paying by WeChat Pay. Uh, China never had as much to be known. Uh, credit cards, it wasn't quite big, the use of credit cards like we had. So this sort of cashless payment form, obviously you have to share it. But on top of that, 1.4 billion people. Uh, you know, the population of this country, you know, in general is 340 million. So just percent wise, yeah, it's extraordinary. Uh, is the social media format, and I believe one of your earlier slides, I, I love this, is that uh, we talked about the consumer uh, experience uh, in the West, and compared to China's consumer experience, and it was, uh, I think you called it a highway. It's a super highway, and it's called WeChat. Okay. Uh, instead of using even your work email, you'll see, and I believe we're having uh, uh, a slide showing, <laughs> a video showing of our now for you. Anyway, it's, a, it's an incredible, incredible format to communicate. That's access. Brands, you know, become more famous. And so there are a lot of uh, famous Western brands in China already. And so they're exposed to it, they share, and they, the desire is that. You know, most people don't realize this, but we were actually a physical retailer uh, from the late 90s. And it was always on authentic goods. Chinese consumers don't want copycats or counterfeits. They want the real committee. We have a zero tolerance uh, on counterfeits. So Chinese, you know, we buy a lot of counterfeits, but the Chinese don't. And you know, it, it's often to see very important. Uh, Katie, we have over 100 drone bases all over China. We're the only licensed company to distribute by drone. Uh, we have 7,000 delivery centers all over the country. So these are, you know, I look myself, so, uh, you know, I'm you know, very concerned about drones flying all over, uh, you know, where I fly. And uh, in China, this is all licensed. And you'll see some of these videos, some autonomous vehicles. Uh, these are, are drones in where they fly. That's the new part of, you know, what's happening with all of these technologies. Traditional retail, it was always, you know, from the 20th century, uh, you think of Stanley Marcus, who was a mentor of mine. I, I was a, you know, very young, and I was a, a, a personal shopper in Dallas at Lumi Market, and you gave the customer what they want. So that is just bottom line necessary for any retail, for any decade or same way. And I believe Terry, prior to me during the last session, said something. Exactly. Using mobile platforms, using mobile phones, PC, using all the you know AI capabilities you have, cloud, all of this has to come together in a seamless way, and that's how you're giving the customer. They have the option to over 300 million active customers. We deliver same day or next day, guaranteed. So if you order before 11 a.m. in the morning, you will have your package. Anywhere in China before 11 p.m. that night. If you order after 11 a.m., you'll have it uh, by 11 a.m. the next morning. That's the 211 promise. 
And that's accurate, 90% of them are not there. But if you're in China, it's one of our seven fresh stores, uh, which is a physical store. Um, and it's completely autonomous for men. You know, no, no clerks in it, no people. You walk in, you do your face is scanned. So after that, you shop around. There's magic mirrors. And you can imagine a produce section in your local supermarket. You pick up an apple, and the mirror behind the, the uh, display lights up with a map of the world, and it points to where the apple came from, where, when it came from there, and its sweetness content, its sugar level, and the price. And you take the apple and put it in an autonomous cart that's following you through the market. Put it in, and it follows you out and has your things in the link. So that's a, a customer who wants to, you know, say, yes, you can buy an apple online uh, and have a chip, but a lot of people would like to touch one. And so and I don't think that's going away. Physical, you know, the good news is physical retail is not dead and it's not going away. And I think this notion of, we like to call it online to offline. So in China, we developed, you know, we believe fraud, right, as I said earlier. So we have this massive e commerce business. But now, now that we have this, now we're going the opposite way. We're opening many, many stores, physical stores, and using all of the technology we learned along the way, you know, to enhance that. So it doesn't really matter where the customer is. So great examples of, of things that you've seen throughout the journey. Is it, is it based on the technology? Is it based on the experience? What do you see on the promise? You know, if you just, if anyone in this room, whatever business you're in, you know, you have to deliver, and, and not just physically, but you know, emotionally to a customer. Uh, you know, if you, if you don't tell the truth, if you, you know, don't deliver on the promise of what they thought you had told them, same in China, they don't come back. You know, you can't afford, although the scale is very important when you think of the, you know, 1.4 billion customers that have potential, you know, you, don't have a you know, you don't want to disappoint one of them. And so I think that is really something to keep in mind. Uh, but again, the, the one of the wonderful things of the way JD has developed all, all of the technologies and the business, it's it's really, I use the word open source, so to speak. Uh, we aren't disrupting the retail business. In fact, we want to share with the with our brand, other retailers. Uh, restaurants. Uh, we're sharing all of our technology uh, as a service. We're calling it retail as a service. Uh, and that's the future. You know, so you can't, it's not a play alone. If you're good at something, do that. If you're, you know, you know we're quite good at logistics and AI and, you know, drone technology. Uh, so those are things that the company is now actively sharing with others and retail partners. A lot of them know them, and they're actively working with us on using these technologies. And that's, that's, really, that's really exciting. And again, when you look at the size of the market and the number of consumers to see this work at scale versus just the pilot is really exciting because you guys have been here for 100 years, so it's not a notion of we just knitted all this together. It was pretty intentional in terms of how you build the units. Those are things that the company can share with other big organs, big retailers, brands, to help augment what they're already doing. It's you no know, need to invest in it yourself. We've done it, and that's part of our service. We have a, for example, called Light Love Delivery. So besides the 211 promise of delivery, and this is all in-house, these are employees. So this last mile of delivery, uh, a customer buys on JD now, our top, top life on our grocery platform. Uh, a, we, in the top tier cities, we can deliver that in less than two hours by a black suit, uniformed delivery person uh, with white gloves in a black electric car, a new black electric car, delivered in person to the customer. And, and a lot of these, it's, it's, a, it's a ceremony. So some, some of our customers are wanting to deliver to their office. Their, their spouse buys them a gift, and they want to show it off. So obviously, they don't have their own last mile delivery. They use others, so they can use ours. It's proven, 
and it's got to have work looking, customer engagement, strategies, et cetera, because clearly the one you just articulated is fascinating, but you know, if you're sitting there, then where? It's just to frame it. Um, it's very easy to those three W's, uh, but the what part, I think everyone in this room is doing. You know, that's, the, we'll call that traditional retail. You know, giving the customer what they want. Um, then the winning part, and that's where Jay is master. You know, you know, just incredible logistics uh, operations. And, you know, that, you know, is something that a lot of big, you know, logistics companies, uh, supply chain companies that you can partner with. Uh, in Asia, we're a good one. Even if not, we can share you know, some of our, our uh, journey with you. Uh, and then when, you know, it's all part of the logistics side supply chain, but also how it's done, the, the umbilical cord in terms of the digital sort of connectivity of it. Uh, and that's, in your journey of building your business and strategy, those are the three things you, everything, you don't need to be great at all of them, but you need to partner with the right people who are. And I think this, this hall, these halls are full of vendors who can do a lot of those things. Uh, but that's the best way to think about it. But also, it's good. Uh, and I'm going to show the uh, Jamie Foundation uh, clip. Okay.